welcome back everybody to Jenny from the Chopping Block. Really, really. And today, no three, two, one. No three, two, one at all. Really, I'm going like this. Really. <laughs> so Eric Swanson, why don't you introduce yourself? No, why don't you it? introduce me? <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, I'll introduce you and then you introduce me. Here we go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring you the one and only, the amazing Jennifer Dalton. She's been changing people's lives, including hers, and that's how she's going to change your life. Now, Jennifer, who, who do you have for your next guest? So my next guest is Eric Swanson, the man, the myth, the legend. And what is there not to talk about with Eric? He has five, number one, best-selling books. He he knows everybody. He knows the dudes in the industry, the founding fathers. Um, the, he, the founding dudes. <laughs> the founding dudes. That's right. He, <laughs> um, so I, w I actually really want to dive in and hear more about the Habitude Warrior and how you founded that and what inspired that. Yeah, I'd love to. I'm going to share your stuff, by the way. Do you mind if I share you on this thing called, I think it's called um, social media? Oh, like yeah. I yeah, I'm going to share it. I'm gonna share it. Rock and roll. Let's see. How do I do this? Share now public. Yes. Boom. Done. So, um, yeah, I got started years ago. You know, I, I don't know, 25 years ago, basically when you were born, almost born. Right. And uh, and the Habitude Warrior brand came around. Habitude is, is a combination of your habits and your attitude put together. And uh, and and what I did was I was talking to a gentleman named Jim Rohn. Um, in fact, here, I'll show you. Uh, you asked me to share a picture <laughs> earlier. I'll share a picture if I have it up here. Hold on one second. Here we go. So that's me uh, years ago with Jim Rohn. <laughs> Looking sharp. Wow, look at that. You guys are like action. practically hugging. <laughs> I don't know what, I'm holding him up still, I think. I don't know what's going on. He's like one of those puppets, you know, like. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. You are a but, character. But look at me. Wow, what a beard situation I had going on. I, I don't know. They. I you never knew about certainty in your eyes. Yeah, I think it was Christmas time, unless the hotel was really, really lackadaisy <laughs> about cleaning up their holiday mess behind us. There, anyway, I started with with uh, with um, I started with Brian Tracy, but I shared stages with Jim Rohn, um, and and this is really cool because he came up to me, and I was really scared one day uh, because he comes up to me and and he says, "Hey, Eric, what what are you doing with Brian?" And I said, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the best salesperson, motivational speaker ever. And he goes, yeah, what do you really want to do? That's what Jim Rohn asked me. I was like, really wow, when, you know, when Jim Rohn asks you, what do you really want to do? You, you go and you sit and you find the, the tallest mountain with a, a fig leaf and you, and, and some Deepak Chopra music going on in the background and you, and you zen it out. Right. So I got back from Japan and I came up to Jim and I go, okay, Jim, uh, or Mr. Rohn, I think I figured it out. I want to help people with their habits and their attitude. That's what I told him. And he said, you should put that together. So I literally put the word together, which I don't think he meant for wow. me to do that, but I did. And that was, uh, this picture was taken about a, a year before he passed away. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. So did you meet him? Was that when you founded um, the company or was that like yeah, after so it was you went actually, to the mountaintop? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I went to the mountaintop, came back. It was just during the break of the seminar. And uh, and, uh, and then about three months go, goes by, and I started thinking about what Jim was talking about. And I was like, wow, this is this is really profound. I mean, if, if a gentleman like like Jim Rohn and the mindset that he has, you know, uh, like uh, here's another one, like Think and Grow Rich, you know, Napoleon Hill, any of these founding fathers of amazingness. Ooh, there's a book title. Ooh, this, is, this was really cool. Check it out. I got this one from my buddy, Greg Reed, who... Um, um, he had a, a, a collector's item signed by the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And what I did was I invited all these speakers. And then guess what they did? They ended up signing all those speakers like John Asroff, Brian Tracy, Les Brown, Sharon Lecter. I mean, you name it. Everyone's in here. It's really cool. So um, really cool stuff. I don't know how I got on these books. That's but... like a piece of artwork. I love all the different colored I'm markers. I'm telling you. So you dope. See all this stuff. Here, man, search for meaning. What? Good stuff. Um, oh, check this one out. Check this one out. <laughs> Gotta check this one out. This is cool. Check it out. 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 I'm a DJ. Check it out. So this one's really cool. Called Acres of Diamonds. It's a great book. It's really, really awesome. If you're not familiar with it, which by the looks of your eyes, you're not, you should definitely <laughs> check that out. Okay. It's called Acres of Diamonds. It's a very touching, uh, very, very, very sad story of uh -oh. a gentleman. Um, it's it's really quick, by the way. It's like a. Am little... I gonna cry? Yeah, totally. It's, I don't want to cry. A... Check, no, you have to it's check it out. It. It's, a, it's a quick read. It's like a pamphlet. Basically, what happened, and everyone knows this story. Okay, what happened was 
your acres of diamonds. So Russell Conwell was the um, was the author, okay, and he's the uh, founder of Temple University. What happened was, um, you he, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the whole story of the book, but the premise is this: it's you have acres of diamonds within us, inside of us. That's what Jim Rohn used to tell us. You know, be don't be a better this that this that this. Be a better you, and you're going to be a better everything. Mm -hmm. So work harder on yourself than everything else, and everything else will flourish around you. That's the premise of this book, which is amazing. Right. And the the gentleman who the book is about, not Russell, but the um, the gentleman who the book's about, he ended up selling his house, his, his ranch and everything, and went out there to go search for gold and search for things. And he didn't realize he actually had acres of diamonds that he was sitting on. He didn't realize it. And uh, he ended up committing suicide at the, at the end of the book. So good luck. Have a good good read on that one. But oh, uh, I'll definitely point, cry. You are funny. Yeah. Where's your little microphone? <laughs> My little microphone's right here. I have, I have like nine microphones <laughs> everywhere. The, uh, the real microphone I was going to use is the, um, the main uh, podcast one, which is right over here. And then the problem with this one is it's so tiny. So <laughs> don't usually... Usually isn't that much, but check this out. Check this out. So acres of diamonds. So as I was mentioning acres of diamonds, so I'm a big book buff. Okay. I don't really read them. I just hold on to them. But here's the deal. Um, so here's acres of diamonds that I just showed you a second ago. But this one right here, which I keep in a little very cool glad bag is the actual first edition, first copy from 1893. This is literally that this book. No way. Acres of diamonds in 1893. It's is that cool? Are you serious? I'm really gullible. No, I'm totally serious. Okay. Yeah, it's a. I ended up getting it on uh, uh, on an auction. It was really cool. By the way, I think they just took gullible out of the dictionary. It's no longer look. I don't believe you. <laughs> you can't. You can't look it up anymore. It's crazy. I don't even know how to spell it. They misspelled it actually. So, All right. Yeah. Can you Acre tell me Diamond more about Habitude Warrior? I want to know yeah. everything. So, you, so yeah. you're helping. You're helping mold people's habits and attitude. So it's. Positive Correct. attitude and and great habits to get into to better your life, and that all makes up all the other stuff that we're looking for. It's exactly right. Yeah. So Beautiful. habitude. So so bringing it full circle. Jim Rohn and I talked about this, and then about three or four months goes by where I'm thinking about it, going, "Oh my gosh, if these true leaders, you know, founders of 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 uh, thought patterns, uh, really." Uh, of self-development really uh, thought that that was a great idea. I'm going to do it. Right. So, so I ended up uh, starting something called Habitude Warrior and what that was the concept and the principles for me to teach my students is their, their habits and their attitude, how to sustain a great habit and great attitude on a daily basis and share that with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, you know, to, to make things go really, really positively instead of always looking at the negative. Cause a lot of people do that, especially nowadays with, with the situations going around, it's like, how can we make it in a positive, um, you know, a, a outcome or, or outlook on this? And the first thing is you need to make a positive outlook to get the positive outcome. So it's really, really, uh, I, I just love it. And it turned into um, an actual conference now. So we have 33 of my top uh, friends that are top speakers that come to come to the seminar, um, our conference in different cities and, and it's all TED talk style. And it's cool. Really cool. Yeah. A lot of fun. Lot so of fun. how did, so how did that, like, how did that turn into the conferences? How'd you start? Like, can you give me a quick like outline of how it went down? Yeah. So what we did was I just, I just put it together. I, I, I changed some things around where I used to run something called uh, Universal Seminars, which was a one day event where we went there and we sold all the audience members, which really didn't really pan out as well as we wanted to because people were like upset that they were getting sold all day long. So yeah. instead we changed the whole system around. So now we do it all, all a TED Talk style presentation and, I, and it's an invite only. Um, it is a pay to play, but it's an invite only. And what's really cool is we have a two year waiting list to get on our stages nowadays. Actually, because of COVID, it's a two and a half year, right? Because oh. we had to push back a little bit, but it's a two year waiting list. So it's really kind of like, and then it, it actually spawned into um, our magazines. Well, this is success profiles, but this one's uh, the uh, influencers magazine where we actually put 33 of our top speakers articles in here in the magazine. You're a big deal. This is awesome. I'm telling you, check I this love out. that. Four years ago, I was on the cover of Success Profiles magazine. That's pretty cool. Anyway, that. enough about me. Let's talk about you. No, <laughs> I have more questions it. for you. Jenny from the Chop and Block, Chop and Block, Chop and Block. What up? 
<laughs> I guess I could segue into a question that I want to know. This way I know I have time to ask it. Is what is your favorite food and or recipe? <laughs> Sorry, I want to wear this halfway through. I know I'm, I know where I've been. Um, let's see. <laughs> what is my favorite food and recipe? Uh, I love sushi. Sushi mm. and I are best friends. Sushi is such a big one for everyone. Is it really? That's yeah. Awesome. I also love mac and cheese. I got to tell you. <laughs> so, what kind? Regular mac and cheese? Or you like like funky yeah. ones? No, regular, regular. And I put I put lots of Parmesan cheese on there. It's like crazy. Like like Italy calls me. It's like, slow, slow down. We need some cheese <laughs> for our pots over here. That's what happens. But sushi is my favorite go-to. I love it. All right, awesome. And what's your favorite like fish? What's your favorite sushi roll? You want to hear my favorite uh, favorite meal I've ever had in my life? Yes. Like seriously, like I know it. Like I can, I can taste it right now. I can smell it and it's amazing. It was the um, time that my, my father had taken us to the Shenandoah River Valley to go canoeing for three or four days. And there was about 10 of us, my brother and I and my, my father and some of his friends. And, um, and we ended up running. <laughs> we, we capsized the canoe a couple times. All of our food went down river um, and we, could, we didn't have any food except we had this one chicken. Uh, left and it was like the day three we were all tired and exhausted and 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 we and he ended up making this chicken on a on a like bonfire kind of grill that we we made shit you know made it and uh and then the um the the uh what do you call it when the people who run the thing i don't know what they're called but they came to pick us up and uh and and we're in the back of this this school bus or their bus their camp bus eating the chicken in the back on the floor. It was the best <laughs> I've ever had. It was amazing. I love amazing. that so much. And amazing. Eric, I want to ask you, you don't have to tell me, but did you tip the canoe? It was you, wasn't it? Wait, what? I don't did have you, to tell you what? Did oh, did I? I was like eight. No, I didn't tip the canoe. <laughs> okay. I was, eight years old. I was a little kid. I was crying though. I remember that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was okay. like, because it was like, it was rat. There were it was white water rapids, like that we were cruising oh. down. And here I'm an eight year old with my Mad Lib magazines. You don't know what that is, but anyway, and I'm going, what's going on? I'm crying. I know Mad, Mad Lib's like where you fill in the words. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So I, I know I asked you earlier, you've just lost your dad about a year ago. Yeah. It was actually three years ago, but yes. Oh, three years ago. Yeah. Okay. Seems and like what, yesterday. crazy. What's the dog tag that you have on your microphone? Yeah, it's the same one I have here. So my my father, when when I, when I lost my father, um, or when he passed on, um, these initials came to me, and and it's just N D S O, which stands for No Drama, Serve Others, and it's all about serving people, and that's why that's why these shows are so important. You know, I'm, I'm I, I give you a high five, a COVID high five on on uh, on doing <laughs> some shows like this because you're bringing awareness and awesomeness to the world. So I appreciate you, Jennifer. I appreciate you. I can't believe you're on here. This is awesome. Yeah. So good right. Getting well, to know you. Absolutely. So can you tell me a and little shout bit? Shout out to Byron. Byron uh, Ingram. What's up? Byron's, Byron. a, Byron, Byron's one of our Habit to Warrior rock stars. He's been on my stage a couple times. He's a great Wow. Guy. And you're really friends with Tony guy. Rodriguez. I think that's the first time I ever saw yeah. you. I know all the Tonys. Like, if you're looking for a Tony, <laughs> like, if anyone's missing a Tony, you just talk to me. I know Tony Rodriguez. I know Tony Robbins. I know I know Tony Tony. I don't know what that is, but it's, a, it's I know people who've won Tonys. Um, Do you yeah. really? I know everyone who's who's involved with the Tony situation. Who's yes. your favorite person in the whole world? My dad. Oops. Don't tell my mom that. <laughs> Oops. Oh, well, well, why was he your favorite? My mom's my favorite person in this oh, world. Oh, you're in trouble. In this world right now. <laughs> you're in so much trouble. <laughs> I don't know. My dad, you know, it's just, you know, my dad's my dad. My Here, I'll show you. Here's a here's a picture of my dad and I um, rapping. We're like. Yeah. And he always puts a. Uh, he puts this, he tells me this all the time. He says, go kick <gasps> ass. I say that every day to my really? friend who's in the, in the hospital. I'm like, kick ass. And Aww. I make him say it. And he says, kick ass. And I'm like, kick ass. <laughs> yeah. He says it all the time. And um, my, my dad used to say that to me before I was, let's say I was going on stage with like, I don't know, Brian Tracy or any of these really cool Les Brown. Do you know who Les Brown is? Yes. Or any of these. Okay. So if I'm going to sh share no a stage. Deal. Just on a stage okay, with us. You know, let, let's, I actually was going to call him. Do you want to, I'll pull him on the phone right now if you want. You want me to call him? Who do you want? I'll call whoever you want. Anybody. 
whatever. Just just tell me. I got a Rolodex. It's pretty fun. So so when I'm jumping on the stage with like Sharon Lecter, who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki, or or Les Brown, or Greg Reed, or any of these people, my dad my dad would always text me and it it say go kick ass, and I'm like Dude, that's oh, okay. that me, that's crazy. That's yeah. amazing. It was awesome. I love that. I'm gonna start saying that to you. Am I allowed? I think we should yeah, just say yeah. it to everybody. Like, kick ass. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. The Go Kick Powerful. Ass uh, uh, Summit. We should have the go. Why don't you and I put together a Go Kick Ass Summit? I'm so in. Like, done. Here. Done. Shake on it. Shake on it. All right. So, <laughs> we can do a Go Kick Ass Summit. We'll bring in Gary V. We'll bring in Tony Rodriguez. We'll bring in all these really cool cats that, that we know and love. And then we'll bring in a. Here's the secret, though. We'll bring in a few people that we don't really like. And then we'll just say, <laughs> uh, We didn't have enough time for you. Sorry. <laughs> and we just won't put them in. Um, it'll be fun. <laughs> You know what I was thinking? I know Zoom, uh, this stream yard, I just came on and I could have up to 10 people on here. Mm -hmm. I want to play with that. Yeah. Stream yard's awesome. I use it all the time. It. Great. So, so can you tell me what's going on I with can you? Tell you How are you? you, want me to tell you. <laughs> what what have you been I? up to? Yeah. Are we are we getting is this the what is this part of the is this the really central part of the uh, show? What's going on here? <laughs> <Let's have> a... <laughs> I'm trying what's to get your here? attention. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what's I'm going watching. On? And by the way, just to answer all of your listeners, because I know you have 4,000 people on right now. Um, I, I'm looking at my <laughs> other so. computer, by the way. Do you guys do you guys have extra computers just laying around? I do. I do. So, it's kind of fun. So uh, I'm. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm. Yes, I am like this all the time. You can ask Byron. <laughs> it's just you know. Here, here's what I do, and what I always love to teach people is I like to have fun no matter what. Will you leave me alone? I like to have fun no matter what. It's like it wants to be fed. It's, it like, more, really? it's like more water, please, more water. What? Like, no. Go. Leave me alone. So anyway, so I can't believe I said that joke. That was stupid. But. But the point is that I'm like this all the time. And the reason why is because I love to have fun in life. You know, if you're not going to have fun in life, like it, it, what's it, what's the purpose of doing whatever you're doing? All right. So that's why I love, I love, you know, you got up this morning, you went to studio, which is really the same place and, uh, and you're ready to rock, you know, and you're changing people's lives. I'm ready to the, kick ass. Yeah. And I love your smile. You got a great smile. So thank congratulations. Jake. Yeah. Thank you, you so call, much. I gotta, I'm going to call your mom and thank her for, for your smile. <laughs> Miss Dalton? Yeah, your your daughter I, has a really I, I call her the Jean Machine. Jean Machine? Oh yes. my gosh, really? She gets really pissed. She's like, I waited my whole life to be a mom and you're calling me Jean. <laughs> That's so funny. Does she does she so denim? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where are we in this? When are we going to start recording? Oh, we're live? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, we're live. Tell me more about your books. How how do you what was your first book you ever wrote? All right. This the first book was this one right here. Bam. It's called Secret Habitudes, 50 Secret Habits. And it's- uh, Can you it's give what us one? Can I what to who? Can you give us one of the secrets? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see, let's just skip to a page. How about the secrets of masterminding? Oh, uh, that's up. what I'm By up to in Think and Grow Rich. Oh, fantastic. I'm discussing it tonight. So can you Man. give me a little tidbit? Yeah, I have a- do you realize I have a signed copy of Think and Grow Rich here with all of my, uh, the president of Napoleon Hill Foundation and all of my speaker friends? It's so cool. Um, so, hey, uh, getting back to this, though, check this out. So Greg Reed, my buddy Greg, um, you should interview Greg Reed. He's great. He's awesome. I'll, I'll make that connection if you want. Thank you. Um, Greg Reed and I, um, actually, here, here's a picture of, boom, there's a picture of Les Brown and I. What up? I don't know if you can see it. So Greg calls these books bathroom books. You know why? You can read it in one sitting. That's what he said. <laughs> Depends. How long you are funny. Wait, give me one tip on masterminds, please. Okay, so masterminds. So the one tip is this: join one. Okay, that's the <laughs> that's the main one tip. Join a mastermind. You are a character, and you have character. <laughs> Boom. So get the workbook. Here's the workbook of Think or Grow Rich. What we do. Oh, and it's signed too. What up? So what we do with my masterminds, I have a mastermind called the Habitude Warrior Mastermind, where we meet twice a month and it's a 90 minute Zoom meeting. 
or virtual. And what we do is we hold each other accountable. We talk about habits, attitude, and the think and grow rich philosophies. Really cool stuff. So I highly recommend seek that out. Seek out a mastermind that you can you can jump into, whether it's ours or you know one of one of uh, Jennifer's. But look for these because you want to be part of a tribe, part of a group, and peer, -peer it, mentorship. Yeah, there's so a valuable. There's a saying that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a team, right? So combine yourself with the team. I was going to write a book. One of my next books is going to be called the, uh, um, it's going to be called Relationship Currency. And it's all about, the new currency is all about relationships, building these relationships yeah. of awesomeness, you know? Love that. What's your favorite book you ever wrote and why? That I've written? Um, one of my favorite books is probably Social Millions. It's right, right here. By the way, this is the uh, commercial part of the uh, show here, guys. No, here it's you. not. I really want to know. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> right, here, right here. So it's called Social Millions. And it's um, what I do is this. I'm pretty darn good at getting out there and great exposure on social media. You know, and I use all the six or seven major outlets. In fact, a lot of people, I'm going to give you one hint on this uh, in this book right here. A lot of people mess up on this. They only go on like one or two. I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you. There are seven major platforms that we all should be on. Okay. Major ones like Facebook. I'll just name them. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, TikTok. Anyway, um, so <laughs> just kidding on the TikTok. TikTok. But the po point is, though, there's a lot of them out there. But most people, and I, I'll ask you as well, Jennifer, most people only gravitate towards one major one and a second one that's a, a kind of gravitating towards. The rest of the four or five you don't do. Like for instance, you are probably gravitating towards, um, I'm gonna guess, just a, a wild guess, Facebook and Instagram are my two guesses for you. Um, what are yours? Um, for okay. you? No, oh, for you, what do you, what do mine, you do? I'm the, I guess, yeah, I post the most on Instagram. I have two accounts on there and then I do, I feel like Facebook I'm present, but mo okay. and now I've been posting the most after the, the interview with Gary on TikTok. I try to do like at least on three TikTok, a okay. day. Great, Gary uh, Gary V, right? Yeah. Awesome, Gary's a good guy. But so, I awesome. wanna get on YouTube and LinkedIn is so confusing to me. Okay, I've got a great connection. Um, I think her name is Natasha. Send me a message and I will introduce you to Natasha. She's going to be joining our mastermind on as a guest speaker, teach us more about LinkedIn. And she is one of the best LinkedIn people I've ever seen. Um, so I'm happy to make that introduction to you. Beautiful. So the point is, though, uh, social millions, what I did was a lot of people were asking me, they're like, like, like top name speakers, you know, like, like the Bill Walsh's and the, and the, um, I don't know, Brian Tracy's and all these people. They're like, how, how do you do it, man? You're always, you're everywhere. This is yeah. what I always hear. You're everywhere is what I hear, okay? And, <laughs> and which is a really good thing if you're a speaker, right? You don't want to be a secret agent. You want to be out there, right? <laughs> if you're a speaker and changing people's lives. Um, so what I did was I took all the things, the 13 or 14 principles that I use to get everywhere and I put it in this book called Social Millions. Pretty easy. Awesome. Yep. Lo love it. So that's your favorite. That's my favorite right now of mine. My other favorites that I love are, of course, Think and Grow Rich is amazing. Um, I love this one right here. Let's see here. Oh, this is amazing. The Art of Significance by my friend Dan Clark. That's a great book. Amazing book. This is one of my all-time favorites. It was written in 1902, As a Man Thinketh by James Ooh. Allen. Yep. By can, James we, Allen. can we take a step back to Art of Significance? Yeah. Because like, I feel like sometimes in self-development, especially like um, when we talk about it through like date with destiny and stuff, significance isn't always a positive thing. Really? So is, wow. so is that like, is that part of the book? Does it get into that? Yeah, it, it talks is about it, your significance for your, your what, what's called self-awareness and self-comfort and self-comfort zones. Like Brian Tracy and I talked about this years ago, and it's all about like learning that you are significant in in the in the world, you know, and to to really give yourself that value. It's it's amazing. Um, it's a great read. Here's a photo. Get that. Here's a photo of Dan Clark. He's he's a great friend of mine. In fact, let's call him right now. We're gonna call him. And uh, he wrote me a nice uh, nice little thing here. Um, and I was messing with him the other day. I go, dude, I didn't realize that you actually wrote me a a thing. He goes, you should read it. I go. I go, Fred, you are a great guy. Like, <laughs> he's like, you've never so you know what's really weird? I bought um, the Queen's Code, right? 
Yeah. And I was, I accidentally had bought like the teacher's manual. Right. Oh, good. I have it. So I'm like, cool. This is, a, there's a reason why I have it. Life's happening for me. But then I finally get the book. I had to order another copy and it's signed by Allison. <laughs> you should get, oh, that's awesome. You should get all the, um, but all I'm the, not Megan. <laughs> that's awesome. Why that's so cool. <laughs> all right. We're calling Dan Clark. I'm going to introduce you. We'll see, you. we'll see the answers. And then, um, what else? It's his voice. Can mouth. we leave a message? Yeah. Okay. We want to talk to you. You know the drill. Leave me a message, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Hi, Dan. It's me <laughs> with Eric Swanson, your friend. You're on my show right now. We were hoping you could give us a little tidbit on the, the art of significance. I'm really curious about it. I guess I should be holding it over there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, who's Eric? Hey, buddy, what's happening? Hey, I'm just on a on a live show with Jennifer Dalton, and she's pretty darn cool. Um, and she's got a great smile. That's what's really cool too. And uh, we're talking about your book right here, The Art of Significance. And uh, we're just talking about you. So give us a call. Bye. Ciao. All right, who's next? <laughs> so, so Art of Significance, great read, great book. Pick it up. It's awesome. Here's another. Um, Another great book from uh, uh, my, my friend Greg Reed and Sharon Lecter, and it's part of the Napoleon Hill Foundation, Success and Something Greater. And it's uh, it's just a great read. I mean, it's, oh, they signed it for me too. That's really nice. Look, <laughs> I, I, I should read some of these signatures, huh? <laughs> it's really cool stuff. Um, who else? Oh, so are you familiar with uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation? Okay, so my buddy Frank Shankwitz started Make a Wish Foundation, and he wrote the book Wish Man, and there's his name, Frank Shankwitz. Your buddy and he's, started uh, it. Pardon? Your buddy started he's, Make a Wish. <laughs> yeah, that's that's this. Yep, that's him right here, right here. There you wow. go. There's a photo of him right there, and he's a great guy. He's one of our Habitude Warrior rock star speakers. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's so nice. My cousin, um, when he had cancer when he was a kid, so he had uh, a wish and. We do the polar bear dive every year in the ocean oh, um, wow. here in New York for Make-A-Wish. That's awesome. Great cause, yeah. Here, I'll uh, share a picture of, um, let's see if I can share it right now. This is a picture of uh, Frank Shankwitz and I. That's uh, He's one of, one of, one of my great um, motivational you know, rock star speakers on our stages. Um, just a, 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 not a dry eye in the, in the group, you know, he in the audience. so familiar, yeah. yeah. It's a great guy, really cool guy. He lives up the street here in Scottsdale area. Well, I'm in Scottsdale. He lives up the street from me here. Yeah. So, looks like you're a big reader. I love that. Yeah, I can't keep up with myself. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have like a couple I'm reading right now. But okay, what's so I know. Book? What's your favorite book? Um, honestly, I have to pay homage to You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Okay, yeah. So that was like one of the first cool books, like when I was still like in my, not sure if I want to be 100% positive all the time. Like that was the <laughs> one that I was like, I could get down with being a badass. You love. Yeah, you, you should. create your reality. <laughs> Feed fear a sandwich. Um, so that kind of got me in, that got the ball rolling. And now I have so many. Um, you, should, you should write a book, say, call it 98% uh, uh, positive. <laughs> like, right, like, yeah. I don't want to be 100%, just like 98%. Well, you know, you're like, you're dabbling with it at first, and then you're like, whoa, this stuff really works. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do, are, do you do you have uh, something called audience members who leave comments, or not really? I do. I do. <laughs> oh, let's, let's say hi to them. Uh, uh, guys, uh, if you're here, they? I don't see any love right now. You rock. I'll just put the love in there. Here, I'm just going <laughs> to... Keep on here. Share my stuff. I'm putting it in there. Jennifer is awesome. Okay. Oh, there. Thank you. <laughs> How do I get more of this guest? Okay. There. Here, I put more stuff in there. There you go. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm bring my own party. What's going on? <laughs> Are we live? What's if you <laughs> who is if this you girl? Could have... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, I would, uh, um, my superpower would be to do everything I just did again. Wow. That's how much you love the process of it. Oh, I love what I just did for the last, you know, how'd you do it? 40, Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? 
for the last 40 years I've been alive, 50 if you're really counting, but anyway, um, I just, I love it. It's awesome. It's great. I wouldn't change it for anything. You know, I, I just, I would do it faster. <laughs> yeah. How would you do it faster? I don't know. You seem to accomplish a lot. That would be my superpower. But I'd be can... able to do it. Yeah. I'm working on something called double, double, um, which is, I, I do this every year. So what I do is I, I double my income from last year to this year and I double the time off that I do it in. So I do the double production of other, other people, but I do it in half the time that I, I, I give myself. So were, were you always in self-development or did you start with somewhere else and then kind of migrate here? What brought you here? I was always kind of in self-development, meaning in my mind I was, but really I was in something called waiting tables. <laughs> that's, Me too. that's Really? Yeah. So I, I used to be a server for years. So they're still in service. Okay. Yeah. So it's all about service, you know, serving others. I used to be in a, in a, um, um, restaurants actually is how I, I started in this industry is because I met, uh, someone named Brian Tracy through working at a restaurant in Austin, Texas. That's how I met. That's so cool. Yeah. And he had a big impact on your life. Just um, yeah, of course. What was yeah, your, Brian Tracy. what was the breakthrough with him? Um, working with him. I mean, Brian is like, um, is raw and awesome. I'm writing more notes for you. Um, Brian Tracy. Is, I can't uh, keep up. <laughs> Brian Tracy is a keep up. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, I just did a shout out for, uh, for Tony Rodriguez. Oh, let's say hi to uh, um, Byron. Hi, Byron. What's oh. up, Byron Ingram? Hey, Tony Robbins. Hey, Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk. Hey, Damon John. Hello, Dan. Dan. Wait, Clark. we didn't mention somebody. Um, we mentioned Bob Proctor. Yeah. Who's your other friends? Um, uh, let's see. Les, Bob, Brian. Um, who else do, you, do we mention earlier? Frank's amazing. So Frank? what was the last question? I can't remember what the last question was. Superpower. No, I already answered that. I want to be me again. Okay. <laughs> I want to redo what I just did. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. So we were talking about you in the service industry and how you met Tracy, Brian Tracy. That's right. Yeah. And so Brian you worked Tracy, with him. Yeah. Brian Tracy is similar to, uh, to Zig Ziglar or Jim Rohn. He's very similar to that, um, that style. And Brian's amazing. He's a legend, a living legend. And he, um, in fact, I'll share, I'll share a photo if I have one over here. Uh, let's see here. I've got tons of photos. Um, so Brian, I uh, forgot what the question was, but he's amazing. <laughs> he's awesome. Uh, this is an old picture of Brian and I. Let's see if uh, there you go. That was when I was first oh, started okay. in the industry. Wow. Oh, I met him, wow. I met him, yeah, I met him through a um, through a restaurant I used to work at in Austin, Texas. That's Do you remember what, what he ate? No. <laughs> I Damn didn't. it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. <laughs> He ate nuggets of awesome. He ate sushi. Can you imagine? He just eats. He, all he eats is inspirational quotes. <laughs> They're like crackers. Can I get some tartar sauce? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> what kind of quotes would you like? I would like a little Deepak Chopra. Um, a little. Do you love Deepak? Deepak's Deepak. awesome. Yeah, Jay Shetty. Let's give a shout out to Jay. What up? Jay, love Jay. I'm actually right about. I, Wait, who was I just? Hold on, I um I'm doing his Passion to Paycheck <clears throat> course, yeah. and I pretty I'm pretty much done with it. But he has live Q and As, yeah. and then he has this business coach to come on, and I'm really digging him right now. I forget his name now. That's not probably bad that I forget his name. I can't remember his name. But there's like hours of um, advice and stuff that I can't wait to dive into. Nice. Yeah. Here, here's a. This is a cool photo. I'll show you. Um, this is a bunch of cool cats. Let me see. I feel like Tony Robbins would be my number one like intro to like, wow, this is real. You yeah, know? Tony's great. Yeah. He's a good guy. When Tony hugs you, he hugs you twice. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It was healing when I got a hug from him. Yeah, he's a great guy. I have a great Tony uh, story for you. So this, by the way, this is one of my conferences that I just bring some of my friends together and, and we do a- Wait, a how do I know Sharon Lecter? Sharon Lecter is a very famous, amazing individual who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. And she's also written Think and Grow Rich for Women. Um, she's a seven time number one bestselling author, New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, really cool stuff. 
Yeah. Um, let's see. There's Alex Stern, who started Constant Contact. Uh, there's Shanda Sumter. She's amazing. There's Marie Diamond, who's in The Secret. Uh, Laura Langemeyer was in The Secret. There's Brian. There's Jim Cathcart. Amazing individuals. These are legends. They're a legend. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! So, so uh, what was I just telling you? Oh, yeah, my Tony story. Mm -hmm. So here's my Tony story. And, uh, and, and the Tony story is um, I was in Orlando, which is in Florida. And, uh, and I was, I was in, uh, it was October 28th, 1998. Woof. That was a long time ago. You weren't even bored, I'm sure. And and what happened was um, I cruised over there and I did the fire walk and I was ready. And if you've ever done the fire walk with Tony Robbins, you know, you you guys know, cool moss, cool moss, cool moss. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know what I'm talking about. So there you are. You're, you're ready to go. You're nervous. I'm ready to light my lawn on fire. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. You're super, super nervous. I, I roll up my my pant sleeves, which is kind of weird to say pant sleeves. Anyway, um, you roll up your, your pants. Your pant leg. Pant leg sleeve. It's a sleeve of a pant leg. Anyway, you roll those up, right? And you're ready. And you put your hand on the guy in front of you. And, uh, and I'm ready. So uh, somebody's got his hand on my back here. And I'm in front of this. Right, and we're, we're going down the line. I'm, I'm getting nervous because we're getting close. And I'm next. And all I, he all I feel was, was this tap on my shoulder. And one hand left and the other one came, came on. The other hand was like, it was like a mitten. I was like, I, so I looked to my right and then I looked up. <laughs> it was it was Tony, and Tony was there and he's and he says he says excuse me son uh, son we're about the same age and he goes uh, he says something like excuse me would would you mind if I cut in line? <laughs> I was like, dude, yeah, it's your it, this is your party. You're walking to do whatever so you want. Yeah, so he's like, you don't you don't mind, man? This, is that okay? I go, no problem. He goes, so you well, have to follow in the footsteps after his. Big yeah. giant footsteps. Oh, it was great because he cleared all the boulders of the smoldering <laughs> like fire and everything. No, but it was uh he actually wanted to go first before me because um it was a last dying wish of a uh, paraplegic who wanted to be carried across with Tony through 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 the uh, flames of, of fire. Um, you know, the, the firewalk, excuse me. So I was like, of course. So I got to watch that as wow. he yeah, tapped dude. me over and said, can I go before you? And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Those yeah. moments, like I've done, I've crewed a lot. So I do this um, celebrator when you guys walk across the fire. But my, my favorite I've been doing is the silent angel, just guiding people so they don't step off the fire. Yeah. Um, but I love seeing you know, when people decide to do it and that power. Yeah. You know what that's called? What? That, that it's, there's one Japanese uh, phrase or word it's called Satorai, which means instant awakening, instant enlightenment, Satorai, Satorai. So I hear you mention Japan a lot. What's been your experience with um, that culture? I love sushi. I know. <laughs> that was it. That, that's the whole experience. And You're in it for the food, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And and I used to drink like well, like nineteen thousand guppies. Uh, I used to drink um, uh, sake, cold sake. Woo! Guppies? Man, I thought is that fish? Yeah, they're fish. Guppies are fish. Yeah. So I used to drink like a lot of sake, and um, and it was crazy. So I quit drinking. By the way, here's here's three things for your your listeners. If you want yes, three do. things to get rid of in your life to be more successful. Number one, get rid of alcohol. Number two, coffee. And number three, negativity. Those are the three things I got rid of about five years ago. Honestly, like. It's awesome. That's like, yeah. It's still a battle, but. <laughs> what's the thing with coffee? Why is everyone hating on coffee? So coffee, uh, I love coffee. I love uh, double or triple or quadruple bypass espresso. I love that, um, and it's a lot of fun. But uh, uh, what I love, <laughs> what I love to do is uh, the fact of coffee is it, it used to be like a kind of a crutch to me, um, and what that means is like like finish this sentence right. Oh, I can't make that first phone call until I have my first cup of yeah, right? yeah. coffee, right? So you're always getting celery juice. Yeah, yeah, alcohol. So, so basically, I was relying on the coffee too much. I decided, okay, rely on myself. Like, and here's what what happened, Jennifer. I actually now I realize I am other people's coffee. 
So the more I fill myself up with my awesomeness, mm -hmm. I'm able to transfer that to other people. Like my, my mentor told me uh, years ago, all, um, all, all business and sales and, and, and success is that transfer of enthusiasm. So it's all about transferring your enthusiasm to them and giving and being their coffee. Right. So now I, I stand for that. That's amazing. Sorry, I had to take a moment to digest that. I love um. it. Digest <laughs> away. I'll put it if you want. Hold on. Siri, put a time clock for 60 seconds for digestion. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and we'll have a 60 seconds on the clock. Go ahead. So actually, yeah, we're at time. So I do want to, I want to be respectful of your time, but I want to know if there's anything you want to share with the audience. Um, maybe that's helped you throughout the last couple of months of uncertainty. Um, and just, I wanted to really know how you've been through it all. Yeah. So um, just know that there's one, one thing for certain is there's going to be always be uncertainty unless you are certain that there's not. <laughs> yes, I said that that way. And it's true. Like, just take take charge. Like, there's 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 going to be three types of people in the world. People who realize what to do, people who don't realize what to do, and I don't know. I don't know what the third is. <laughs> I guess there's only two types of people. <laughs> I don't know. You were frozen. I was waiting for you to come with the third. I was like... No, I wasn't frozen. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. It's either decide what to do or don't decide what to do or can you see my eyes? Can you see my eyes moving left and right? <laughs> it's true. It's like people are like analysis and paralysis. They just sit there like, should I do this? Should I do that? No, I'm going to stay right here. Right? And that's, and that's what they do. They just stay right there and they don't, they don't move. So, so here's the deal. That's why that's why you're going to see, you know, Gary and, and Damon John and, and Brian Tracy and myself and all these really cool cats, you know, uh, um, Marie Diamond and Laurel Langmeyer, Sharon Lecter, Jennifer Dalton, all these really cool individuals skyrocketing, going to the next level. And people always ask us, they're like, how are you everywhere? It's what my answer is. How are you not everywhere? What's wrong? I love that question. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't you everywhere? What's the problem? Yeah. My friend Sharon Lecter, you know, I mean, uh, excuse me, my friend Laura Langmar, when, when people come up to her, she was in The Secret and she's a millionaire maker and stuff like that. When people come up to her and they try to give her her a business card, she goes, I don't want your card. I want your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? You know, I don't understand why you're why are you the way you are is because you've been you know why you are the way here. Put me full screen for a second. Just put me full screen. You know why you are the way. Yeah, that's you. Full screen. <laughs> wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. How do I do it? <laughs> the other way. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm out. I'm out. Eric, finish this up. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> what I was going to say was this. It, it, the, the reason why you are the way you are is because you, you, have been taking advice from who? You. Stop taking your own advice. Take other people's advice who have, who have conquered the world of awesomeness in that area of industry or, or expertise or whatever. You know, like for me, if I want to write a book, uh, I went to the right people who taught me how to write this book. Right? And now I'm, I'm, I've actually written five of my own books. And I'm in compilations of about seven other books. All of them are number one bestsellers. So it's like, get to that, uh, that point. Why am I on so many stages? Why do I have so many phone calls calling me up going, going how can we get you on our stage? I'm like, well, just stay our English. But the thing is, <laughs> the, the point is, though, get out of your own, your own self. Right? Be yourself, but get out of your own way. And that's the thing is most of you guys are putting blocks up on, on becoming awesome, right? I mean, Gary V didn't wake up one morning and say, man, like he looks at himself, he goes, man. He looks in the mirror, right, Gary V. He goes, man, I am the tallest, best looking dude that wears a hat all the time like I'm in winter. And wow, this is going to really work. <laughs> no, he, he said to himself, screw everybody. I'm going to show them how to be amazing. I'm going to learn from all the greats and I'm going to do it because nobody else around me is doing it. And that's what I'm doing. That's what Jennifer's doing. And ladies and gentlemen, here's Jennifer. What up? Yes. Did you say that? Rise. <laughs> Do I need to go get my hat? What's up? <laughs> Eric, you are amazing. So, I mean, I know I'm pushing time, but have you you been good throughout all this? How is how has it shifted from? I am uh, happy to wear hat. What up? Hats. I'm awesome. What are you talking about? Shifting. Here's I know. A shift I'm just and pivot. Saying. 
shiftandpivot.com. That's actually one of mine. So all you have to do is you got to shift and pivot, you know? And by the way, stop making it hard for people to find you. Look, I have seven different platforms of, of social media. And you know how to, you go to all of them? Just go to awesomeswanson.com. Easy. That's it. It's one landing page. Click on the one resonates for you. Go to my site or whatever the social media and start following us. What's your most successful social media platform? Like you get your um, most views. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, YouTube. I've got Love over, them. I think I have over over seventy five thousand people on my uh, on views on my YouTube right now, just for a few cool. videos that I put up there. I don't know. I mean, it's not about the numbers; it's about the impact. Oh, I know, yeah. But you want to reach the most people with your impact. Yeah, that's what the, that's the thing. And and but the thing is, oops, sorry. There's a little earthquake. Did you see that? I think we both moved. Got <laughs> the thing is, you want to meet, you want to uh, reach the right type of people with your impact, and it will, it'll naturally do that. You know, if you're doing the right thing and you're getting out of your own way and you're using the techniques built in all of my books, <laughs> um, here's one of them. Go to go to bestselling author ericswanson.com and you'll get all these books. Oh, you want, tell you what, I'm going to give all your listeners a free book right here. This one, free book. Sales Habitude, ready? I'll put, it, I'll put it in the feed. Here, I'll put it in the feed. Um, I'm doing so, a giveaway, guys. I'm trying to think what I have left. Um, yeah, yeah just my, my next. My book. I have two giveaways so far that I've given, and I have a couple more things to give away. Some money. Is that the Itty Bitty book? What is that? Oh, no, that's a Gifted Storyteller. That's awesome. Yeah. Here, put, the, put this in I the feed. I would like right to here. throw a T-shirt in there, too. <laughs> that's awesome. Here, put that in the feed right there. Where'd it go? Oh, got it. The bottom one. There you go. Freeawesomegift.com. <laughs> if you go there, you'll get you'll get this book right here. Bam. Cool. I think I I really want to get um I might get two copies of what was the your favorite book? Um The Social Millions. Was that yeah. Social Millions. Boom, right there. This stuff's awesome. Social millions. Oh, we have somebody is showing up. They want to win the giveaway. All right. Rock and roll. <laughs> what up? All right, Eric. Is there anything else on your heart you want to share? This has been so much fun. Um, you should get this book, too. This is for Junior Habitude Warriors. It's for kids. Dude. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, just go to Amazon. Oh, can I ask it. you one more question? Nope. Please? We're out of time. Out no. of time. All right, bring it. So say your tar target audience. Like, I'm actually up to Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd, um, what's happening? Long time is it no, no see ever. So, so your target audience, you want to do your age group and like say, like I'm getting into right now, like your age group, say mine's 25 to 40, whatever okay. it is. Okay. Um, but what if you want to have like reach the kid, the youth, like, and then he's getting into like, uh, can you, can you help me with this one? Um. Yeah. Can we help this, uh, uh, tailor the question to a question? What the hell is your okay, question? Sorry, my question <laughs> is, like, when you have your target avatar, who, like, how do you pick? Uh, okay, Why so that's a, totally, pick? that's a totally different question. So let me, <clears throat> let me jump in and say this. All right, so if I'm hearing sort of your question, if I'm reading your mind, put it that way. Yes, um, you that. you are, are you are reaching you are reaching out to a certain type of individuals, some uh, demographics, which are um, adults. I don't know what your demographics are. Um, adult adults from twenty five to forty that are hip, that are really cool. Um, I'm assuming you probably are reaching. Are your 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 uh, demographics are females and males equally, probably um, for a reason, by the way. And I'll tell you the reason why is because you're a very attractive young lady, right? So you've got yeah. other very, she's like, yes. So you've got other very attractive other, I mean, very, uh, you have other females that are attracted to you because they want to be like you. And then you've got guys that love, love you. Cause it's like, Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Um, so, so that's great to bring them in for, for whatever marketing reasons, which is great. And then they realize, oh my gosh, this girl's so smart. She's amazing. And, and I want to keep on following her. So you're bringing them in and then you want to keep them there, right? So, so you're doing a great job 
regardless. And your demographics are now 25 to 40, roughly. So how do you reach the 40 to 50 group? And how do you reach the 17 to the 25s? Well, the, yeah. 17, the 17 to 25 is super easy. You just target it. So let's say you have a book. Let's say here's my, uh, my book that's Time Habitudes. I wrote this book as a flip book. What this means is it's a to-do list reads this way because we have to have to-do lists things to do every day. And then you have to have a not to do list. Read the uh -huh. down the other way. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So thank you. So, so let's say there's really great techniques in here, which there are, um, what we did, uh, let's say for, for this one right here, the junior, junior habitude warrior book, this one's like a workbook. In fact, here, I'll show you the share with you the, uh, the workbook style. The workbook style is a smaller one, which if you flip into the book, you'll see there's exercises in pretty much every chapter, which ironically I can't change, I can't turn to any chapter that has them. So you have like these exercises that are within the chapters. So what I did was this, I took all of my information that I talked to my adults with and I tailored about 50% of it or 60% of it towards kids. So still you have the adult version information in there because the kids, not, not kids, but the teens, 17 yeah. to 25, are going to be moving into the 25 to 40 year old stuff, which they can still use. So that's what I did. And you could do the same thing with, with your, um, your market. And now that's, that's on your books, but what about marketing to them? Marketing to them is just simply go on a, their platform and B, um, uh, resonate towards them. So what I mean by that is, is literally just seek out different people that are successful in marketing to them already. What are they doing and start emulating some of that? Don't copy it, but emulate it. Right. Okay. And, and don't, and don't change your whole core of your, of yourself. Right? If you go to, let's say core yoga or, you know, yoga, you're not changing your body. You're changing your mindset, the inner, inner part. So you're not changing your whole your whole core of yourself. You're just changing slight movements here and there. Um, the same same principle goes with uh, with with marketing to different age groups, right? So find what they love, what they don't love. You know, different things. Like for for instance, I'll give you an example. Like right here. Like I know you're a lot younger. You're like half my age, um, which is so cool. Uh, I know I look great. But here's the deal. Uh -huh. You are half my age. I know. So here's really? the deal. Yeah. How old are you? I'm gonna be 34 in this month. Yeah, close to half my age. Yeah. So, so basically, you well, look whatever age you are, you're looking 30. Hey, rock and roll. So, check this out. so, so this, um, so I ended up wearing, you know, something cool like this and this, this cool vibe thing. And this is kind of a cool little, little deal that I just threw on. It's just some, some like bracelet. So, I wanted to look a little, uh, you know, not, not wear the really nice Rolex watch or, you know, the different things. So, just slight, tiny little, slight differences will appeal to different. Uh, audience and demographic age groups. I think one more button is always good too. Oh, down? Yeah, here. <laughs> it's actually not. I'm just standing so close. Look, see? <laughs> it's so you can see my ideal. <laughs> oh, oh, you meant this button there. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> This is no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Though. If I do that, look how Ger uh, Urkel looking I look. <laughs> it doesn't. This, this is a Seinfeld episode where this button should be right there. <laughs> it's totally a Seinfeld. Not doing it. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, kids. That's all the time we have. Hey, Robin. Robin Emmerich is on here. She's awesome. I, I, know, so much. I know Robin from uh, Robin Emmerich is on. Say hi. Put her on the screen there or whatever. Um, she, I know her uh, from, uh, from Austin, Texas, I think she's got a great, um, great, uh, like a yoga pants and design oh, and all those different things that she does. Her art is literally on my pants. It's amazing. <laughs> I feel hotter just wearing awesome. them. Oh, everyone's showing up. Now you're, I think you just finally, uh, shared it. Hey, soul. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, Todd, what's happening? Hey, what's up, Todd? Hey, Keith or no, uh, Carrie, uh, good to see you. And hi, Robin. Good to see you. It's been, it's been years. How are you? What's happening? So I met her through Sharon Lecter, I think. No, I met her through, oh, goodness. Sharon and I were speaking on someone's stage over there in Austin years ago. I can't remember who it is. Good to see you, though. All right. Is there anything else on your heart you want to share? I know I took up more time than I'm supposed to. I'm awesome. I got to get to my mastermind. If you guys are interested in joining our mastermind, check it out. Just go to awesomemastermind.com and uh, ask any questions, and we'll we'll be happy to answer them. Beautiful. And get that free gift if you want. Free, free, awesome gift.com. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I had a blast with you and you're amazing. Mr. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Connect with me. I'm happy to connect some uh, some more speakers to you and so forth. Just let me know how I can serve you. Thank All you. Right? Same here. My pleasure. All right. Ciao. See you later. Rock and roll. Bye, See you guys. <laughs>